Down the top. about to roll over, I'm underwater man. Last night was interesting to say the least. Two cars stuck on a salt lake. One easy to get out and the other, yeah, it took a while. Two tyres off the rims, suspected broken axle in the front and to top everything off, an electrical fire. Fun and games. We did what we could last night, but we noticed that there's something not right with the front driver side wheel, which we are attending to this morning. We have a task in our hands this morning. There's something broken inside the CV joint, inside the axle that's preventing Torben from turning one way. So you can, you can straighten the vehicle and you can turn left, you can't turn right. That's obviously going to be a problem. At the current moment, we are pulling everything apart so we can get to the axle and see what's actually jamming it up. And I suspect that there's this cup and the bit that's in here, the knuckle, has just completely exploded and it's preventing us from being able to turn the wheel. It's, it's like locking it somewhere. And we can see here that the axle coming out is completely wedged along the side. It took us half an hour just to get this off by wedging screwdrivers in, so it is seriously jammed up. We are already two days behind schedule, and this problem solving is going to take some hours, and hours we don't have many of. We still have a long way to go to Birdsville. So Torbs has done a proper job, and I'll tell you what, if you're gonna break a CV, you might as well do it the proper way. <laughs> it's just, all this foreign material, well not foreign material, all this material was in here and stopping the, the wheel from turning because it needs free movement. So how this actually works, it sits like that and then it can turn. But say when you, when it's all busted up, it will jam. So he, Torps could turn that way, but he couldn't turn this way. And that's because everything was here blocking it. But he could turn that way because this still gave him free play to the, what was that, to the left? Yeah, left, but no right turn. With this out, we'll be able to drive out of here. Well, Torbs will be in two-wheel drive though. Let's take a closer look at Torben's vehicle. With the shaft broken and now removed, power and torque is always going to follow the path of least resistance, which means even though he has it in four-wheel drive right now, he only has two-wheel drive at the best of times. That said, however, Torben does have a front differential locker. When he engages that, he will now have three wheel drive, which is going to help him through any more difficult salt lakes or sand dunes. But for the most part, he will be in two wheel drive. Nuts please. Wrong size. Wrong size. You got cashews? You may be wondering, why don't we have a spare CV? Well, there's only so much you can carry. And the funny thing is, we used to carry a spare one around, just not this time. Go figure that. All right, a couple of hours later this morning, we've uh, got it all back together, less the uh, swivel hub. So the big test is now, we're gonna put the wheel on and take it for a test drive. Fingers crossed. Torbs, I know you're tired, but it's called a CV. Wheel in. Getting the swivel hub all. Torbs, it's a CV. Well, not fixed up, but uh, temporary mobile. I'm um, feeling a bit better. Temporary repairs, done. Test drive, passed. Time to hit the salt lakes and the sand dunes again. Hopefully smooth sailing from here on. How's the car feel? Uh, well, the front right hand wheel feels good. Uh, driving perfectly fine in two wheel drive. But I tell you what, my senses are so heightened that every little creak, crack is just making me shiver. Yep, that's the old uh, recovery PTSD. Yeah, I'm, it's not good. And the worst part is, is being so far from home just makes you feel even worse. I think you're going to be um, hearing things all the way, all the way there. Oh God, we're in the wars. 
I think that the worst thing for me right now, and especially being a Sparky, is that smell of burning electrical from that uh, electrical fire that came up. That was good we unplugged that one. It's a horrible feeling. Even when you know you've got all the insurance in the world. Yeah, I'm sure, sure it'll be right, mate. Um, I'm sure it'll be right. We'll get it sorted when we get to Sydney. a number of hours since we left the repair site, the first dreaded salt lake. Since then we have passed many salt lakes, one after another, and I'm sure it's not helping Torben's anxiety. Every time he gets to a salt lake, I reckon he'll be puckering up. Whoops, there goes one wheel. There goes another. Torbs, what are you doing to us? Man, you're going through the ringer today. Are we there yet? Oh man, Torbs just can't catch a break, can he? Whoa, look at this little fella. Something other than sand dunes and salt lakes. We have a little lizard, blue tongue, but this is a desert blue tongue, I believe it's called. I don't know if it's a desert that's starting to get into our minds, but these salt lakes are starting to look exactly the same, and so are these dunes. Absolutely hectic day. We're trying to get to Big Red and we keep meeting big salt lakes, one after another. And uh, we found a lot of trucks going around, hugging the edge all the way around, because going through the middle, it's just not possible or very, very risky. So we're taking the chicken tracks wherever we can at the moment, <laughs> especially with Torbs and three wheel drive. Two wheel drive most of the time, and we've been towing as well. The conditions are pretty hectic. This is crazy. Uh, sorry, mate, I'm just trying to pick up your tracks. Yeah, it's just around, mate. Um, when you get to the other side, you've got that, you got a gnarly exit, man. You need three-wheel drive for that. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's a bit of a pop-up. But the wheel you lift is the one that you don't have to drive to, so you should be right. Oh, that sounds helpful. Low on fuel, low on food, low on supplies. We've gone through our reserve days. All we got left is rice and rice crackers. So I'm hoping to get to Birdsville tonight. Oh man, these are insane. Are we there yet? <laughs> Mate, there is Big Red right in front of us. I've got it in sight. You've got it in sight at long last, eh? Yep. Hopefully we can get to it okay though. There's a lot of water in front of it. Oh my lord. Alright, we've got to navigate around. I'm not sure we're going to get a good run up here though, Torps. There's a lot of water on the bloody base of it. Yeah, I have never seen anything like it. Mate, it's a bloody lake. Are we going to get across? That's a good question. I'll let you know. We're running out of daylight. I can't really see the track. I've just got to go for it. Come on! Okay, I'm on. Yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. So close. Only metres away. I'm Cactus. Oh, bugger. Uh, 
but then there's no way I can get to you then. Torbs reckons he's found a good solid line. The only problem is with the damage to his vehicle and being a three wheel drive, it's pushed him off the track. Not again. Two vehicles stuck. I'm gonna to have to get that camera car in here to help us out. This time the camera car is rescuing us. I managed to get the camera car to the halfway mark of where I got to. From there we've done 50 metres of line to winch Corbin just a little bit further. And now he's gonna to get to Big Red. He's gonna idle through because it's, it's hard and I'm slightly off the line on my side. This is the last June, this is the last Salt Lake. At this stage of the night, we are so exhausted. Desert hair, I don't care. I'll tell you what, getting my car stuck twice in 24 hours, I'm surprised I'm not having a mental breakdown. I mean, that, when I went down again, that kills you. And we managed to get me out of the mud, and now I have finally crept to dry land. What a relief. Looks like you made it. Yeah. You'd be a smiling man now. Yep. We have another problem, and another thing to sort out. The Prado. The more we move around the Prado on foot or even just driving the Prado around, the more we're bringing the water up to the surface and it's making it super sloppy and it's just a matter of time before we bog this car. We've got to get it out now. We finally got the Prado out and Torben's out, so now it's my turn. In darkness, we recover. Are you ready? I got smoke pouring out from under my dash. Oh f With Torben busy putting out fires in his dashboard, it looks like we need the Prado one more time. Roger. Okay, I'm gonna start winching in again and go. Ready when you're neutral and brake on. Try you try and reverse and I'll try and go forward at the same time. Are we there yet? No Torbs, we're not there yet. Just keep up with my, keep up with my line. The entire crew is pitching in here. We've had two long nights. Man, we're tired. Modeling. We're not quite out of it yet. We're in a bit of a situation and we won't know the full gravity of that situation until tomorrow morning. Currently, with foam reception at the top of Big Red, I learnt that there are a lot of roads closed around here. The Birdsville races were cancelled as well. So there must have been a big rain event or some kind of weather event that's unusual. So we may actually be stuck where we are because we are down to our final litres of fuel. I have about a 100k range, if that, so does Torben. The camera car is down to pretty much bare minimum. Bare minimum. We're talking maybe 5k to spare if we can get to Birdsville, which at this stage we don't think we can. So right now, uh, we're stranded here because Torben is also fixing his electrics. He had another electrical fire. It's this green death in all the contacts. Things aren't going too well, but that's all part of the part of the adventure. We'll just keep persevering. Torben really has been thrown through a ringer, I'll tell you that much. But he's holding up. So hopefully tomorrow we don't have to count our rations. Until then.
After a late night spent on fixing Torben's vehicle and scrounging out whatever food we had left, it's great to see people on top of Big Red because that means we're not stuck here, we can actually get to Birdsville. Final electrical checks on Torben's Land Cruiser. Let's shut that bonnet and let's conquer Big Red. It's bloody freezing. It's still in one piece. Well, we're in one piece. Cars are not. The cars might not be. Broken CV, electrical fire, oh, boggings. Man, what an incredible bogging journey that was. After bogging after bogging. Oh. It, well, it wasn't easy, was it? No. Well, that's it, guys. <laughs> so we made it to Birdsville. And while we were out in the bush, there was a massive weather event. The whole state of pretty much the interior of Queensland and New South Wales is completely flooded. People have been stuck here for four days and that's about when it rained out in the Simpson Desert. So the roads are just starting to open. We've got our fuel on board before they run out of fuel that is because the Birdsville races are on. There are people absolutely everywhere. So we're going to take our chances today and hit the first road that's open and then just play the waiting game all our way to Sydney. We gotta to get to Sydney for the full drive adventure show, so hopefully they keep opening the roads up. <laughs> 